Hi everybody, I hope that you're all doing really well. So today I am here to talk about the book What Writers Read, 35 authors on their favourite book. This is edited by Pandora Sykes and if you have gone into a Waterstones recently, I'm filming this on the 7th of November, then you will have seen this book everywhere. It has actually been named the Waterstones Book of the Month for November and as the title suggests this basically is 35 very prominent authors talking about their favourite books, the impact that said book has had on their writing, on their life, on their outlook. And you might be surprised to hear some of these authors, it's very prolific, very famous authors. It is predominantly authors from the UK but there are also some other notable names as well. These contributions come from Nick Hornby, Anne Patchett, David Nichols, Marion Keyes, Deborah Levy, Elif Shafak, Leila Slomani, Derek Owosu, Paris Lees, Paul Mendez, Diana Evans, Lisa Tadeo, Tayo Silasi, Nina Stibb, Elizabeth Day, Dalman Galgut, William Boyd, Fatima Buto, Rufa Zeki, Benjamin Zephaniah, Elizabeth Strout, Tessa Hadley, George the Poet, Ali Smith, Dolly Alderton, Jojo Moyes, Sebastian Fawkes, Mina Kandasami, Nikesh Shukla, Monica Ali, Kayla Bazuma Nelson, Sarah Collins, Nisha Dolan, Emma DeBerry, and finally Kit DeWall. So there's a pretty impressive list of authors contributing to this book. Also very notable is that the proceeds from this book are going to be donated to the National Literacy Trust. Obviously it makes sense, a book that is all about the joys of reading, the importance of literature on people's lives, but also particularly pertinent to right now, as Pandora Sykes notes in her introduction, that 800 libraries have actually been closed in the UK in the past few years, which not only for adults but also for young children takes away this key place, not only to read, nurture a love of reading, but also just places for children to just exist, interact with others, sit by themselves and just be without having to pay money for it how the UK government especially seems to have this very dismissive attitude towards arts and humanities as a worthwhile pursuit. Through this book Pandora Sykes is really striving to impress upon us the fact that arts and humanities have just as much an impact on society as technology, as studying STEM, economics, a functioning society requires both. So there is the intention of the book, how did the actual essays stack up? I had originally planned on tackling this book by reading one essay a day, I thought that would just be like a nice way of slipping into this book, particularly for non-fiction November, stretch this book out over the course of the whole month. But that didn't actually end up panning out. I very very quickly ended up just deciding, oh no, I just need to read this cover to cover immediately. I very quickly just got wrapped up in the love of books and as I've said in the past, I am a big fan of a book about books, a book about the importance of reading. I have a little growing collection and this has been a welcome addition to that library. It's just the kind of book that is entirely up my street. I also feel like Pandora Sykes she knew what she was doing when she ordered these essays. It starts off with Nick Hornby talking about Emile and the Detectives, which is not a book that I knew anything about. But then the second book, the second book is Monica Ali talking about Pride and Prejudice. So of course I wasn't just going to read one essay a day. Masterstroke, whoever made that decision, I presume it was Pandora Sykes to put it in that order, to just keep me reading. Brilliant. Well played, Pandora Sykes. Well played. What I thought was also really lovely about this book is that it's not just children's classics or just general classics, old books, that are being mentioned in here. There are also instances of newer works of fiction that are lauded and praised as new favourite books. The most notable being Anne Patchett talking about the book Sorrow and Bliss by Meg Mason, which you may recognise was on the shortlist, I believe, for the Women's Prize for Fiction this year. It's also not just your traditional fiction print books that are included in here. We also have comic books, encyclopedias being mentioned, just anything that has had a profound impact impact on people, whether it's informed their writing, whether it's nurtured their inquisitiveness. A theme that runs through a lot of this book is finding solace in finding yourself within a character. One notable essay being Caleb Azuma Nelson talking about NW by Zadie Smith and talking about prior to reading NW he'd never really encountered other black people within books and being like the main characters of a book that ends up being lauded and praised and becoming a modern classic in itself and how personally valuable that experience is. But we also have authors talking about how they were able to find kinship in characters characters who are entirely different from themselves and the value of that. Sarah Collins talking about her love of Bridget Jones' diary and how when she was reading it as a young mother, how Bridget's experiences were entirely different from her own experiences of adulthood but she could still find a kinship in her messiness and feeling like you're not doing things quite right as an adult. Even though she had checked off some of the tick boxes of adulthood of getting a good job and having a child, there were other ways in which she didn't feel like she was living up to the mould. With these essays being around about 
four or five pages long. And being more of a personal nature, there isn't quite as much depth into each of these books as I would personally want. But to be fair, that wasn't really the point of this book. The point was not for these to be book reports, digging really deep into the plot and the characters and the general impact of these books, but to talk about their personal impact, so I understand that. However, because these essays are so brief and not as in-depth on the books, it also means that occasionally authors in here do make sweeping generalizations or statements that honestly felt a little bit reductionist about characters, which for the books that I did know a lot about really stuck out. As much as I did enjoy Sarah Collins's meditation on Bridget Jones' diary, there was one little quibble that I had with it. She writes about how Bridget Jones joined the literary heroine heights of people like Joan March, Jane Eyre, Elizabeth Bennet, but that the difference between Bridget Jones and these other characters is that Bridget Jones was a messy protagonist, whereas in her own words, Joan March, Jane Eyre and Elizabeth Bennet were more goody-two-shoes characters, which just feels a bit wrong to me. <laughs> Jane Eyre, I can just about understand characterising as a goody-two-shoes, and even then I would say it's an incredibly simplistic reading of her. Personally, I would never describe Jane Eyre as a goody-two-shoes. She isn't good for the sake of being good. She is highly moral, and her strong conviction in her faith informs a lot of her behaviour, but I still wouldn't call her a goody-two-shoes. Describing Joan March and Elizabeth Bennet as a goody-two-shoes, however, seems like entirely wrong. And I did have a moment where I thought, if I'm noting that about the book characters that I do know things about, then what is wrong in the rest of these characters? What else is very reductionist about these books and these plots that I just don't know about? Also, towards the middle, there were moments with this where, you know, you've got authors talking about their process, their writing process, which I don't know if it was just the mood when I was reading that middle section, just felt a little bit self-indulgent, where it just kind of felt like authors patting themselves on the back, and sometimes talking a little bit too much about themselves rather than about the books. But as I say, this book is kind of a conundrum for me where I want to read more about the book rather than what this author thinks about the book. In that case, I feel like I'm just looking for something different than what this book was providing. And my one other gripe that I had with this, there is one essay in here where the author mentions a book that had a profound impact on them, but they didn't know what the book was called, did not know what the author was called, and I was just a bit baffled by that essay. While I do understand that this book is more meant to be about the impact of the book on the author than it is necessarily meant to be about the book itself, I just thought, like, you could have chosen any book, any book that you do remember the title and the name of the author, and yet you went for this one that you don't know. Interesting. Interesting. <laughs> but honestly, these are like little quibbles. It feels like I'm dwelling on them, but really I did enjoy this book very much. If you, like me, are a lover of books that are about loving books, then this is definitely a great one to add to your collection. I got very swept up in this book, as I always tend to do whenever somebody is gushing about literature. I would love to know if you've read this book and what you thought about it, but also I'd be really keen to know if you had been approached by Pandora Sykes and asked to write a short essay on your favourite book and the impact that it has had on you. What what book would it be and why? I would love to hear from you. I hope you're having a fantastic, fantastic day and I look forward to talking to you again soon. Thanks. Bye!